when these frames are over, he says for practice, and not just potting practice, we saw yesterday him playing on for a lot of snookers, he was never going to get. Two cushion escape, caught too thick. Yeah, could spell trouble. Big trouble. Look at the reds. <clears throat> And I think he can get to the black from there, he can certainly get to the pink and blue. I think what he said though to Andy, it was very interesting again, the chat at the table about break building. Should not be forgotten, all the hours of practice he's done over the years. He didn't just pick up a cue and start knocking in centuries, it was a gradual process like it is for everybody. And of course it's the hard work that we don't see. We see the results of it when he gets out on the table. We've seen that for the last 30 years. Professional game. Well, you've actually, you've got to love the game, haven't you? To play 10 hours a day, you've got to absolutely love the game. And that's what all the young pros, myself included, did. In fact, my generation, we must have loved, loved the game because there was no money in it. Yes, of course, as a boy, he grew up watching the the boom era of snooker in the UK on television in the 1980s. He was a big Steve Davis fan. And of course, what came along with the boom was the opportunities to play in all the junior events. He was in a good place in Essex, obviously, a very vibrant area. But then you have to do it, don't you? You know, there's a lot of players who were in the same boat, went to the club, did their best didn't break through he is already a legend of course and who knows what else he can accomplish oh he's dead right David because there were so many so many talented players and Ronnie himself will tell you they were right up there with him but they couldn't do it when it really mattered moving that red away from the black spot staying on the reds to the left corner like he was saying earlier, he sees the plan as it's been formulated in his mind and you have to change your plan many times during a break because you play to an inch and you don't quite go far enough and you've got to change the plan. His plan at the moment is going exactly as he intends. Choice of reds he can play for, he could give them a little nudge in fact, the red directly above the black, he could give that one a little nudge and open those four reds up. Doesn't have to, because he can play for either red, left and right of the cue ball. Well, he started slowly last night, but of course that was his first match. He'd been knocked out very early in the UK Championship second round. But so it'd been over a week since he played. So there you go. Change of plan. He played for the red to finish on the black because it's much easier. But had to screw to the side cushion for the pink. like to be on this red just below the pink but if not then he's got the one to the middle just watch how he plays his positional shots because it normally plays for more than one red unless it's absolutely guaranteed Nothing he can do. He put him in trouble twice. Fifty-one. Fifty-two. To 
doesn't need to go into the reds, he can win the frame with the loose reds that's available. Inch perfect for this positional play. Again, doesn't need to go into them here, but because he's come just a little bit further than he wanted, he might decide to go into them. Just wanted to be a little straighter and he'd have been closer to these two reds near the left side cushion. So that's the reason he's gone into them. And not ideal on a red, but the way he's queuing, you'd expect him to pot it. Yeah, just needs the red. And in it goes. So, well, that's what you call a quick kill. For five minutes this break's been going. So, a slow start last night, but opposite tonight. Well, his first three shots put Chang in trouble. Excellent safety shots, followed by excellent break building and positional play. Yeah, and if he's not practising, which can, you know, be drudgery at times, then if, if he's only, the only snooker he's playing is in matches, then maybe he looks forward to it more. Yeah. Well, he said something interested in practice, and I'm certainly going to try it, where he puts all balls on one side of the table and just plays one shot. He doesn't have to walk about, he plays one shot and practices the black off the spot and why not do that? You save leg work and you play more balls. Never thought of that. <laughs> it's certainly going to get attempted. It's never too late, Joe. <laughs> well, that's why it's always worth listening to great players because they come up with all kinds of ideas. Well, are we going to start with a century? made one last night. And for all the talk, rightly, of Robertson and Trump, you know, catching up in terms of getting towards 800, let's not forget this man's made 1,071. Here it comes then, the black for the century in the opening frame. What a start. People have tweeted me saying that I shouldn't give them as much sugar as what I do, but how can you not? How can you not just appreciate the brilliance that's been played in front of you? Well, I thought it was interesting. We saw the tweets at the start of the show. First half of the match last night, it was quite critical of him. And then as the match went on and he started to play better, it, it completely changed. And that, uh, I guess... He's wrong, isn't it? He does split opinion, but nobody, and I mean nobody, can deny how good he is. Best player ever. Yeah, there was a time that I might have argued with you, but not anymore. 16. A different way of getting onto the pink. Like it. Black for a total clearance in frame one. Well, that was glorious, that break. 